We're taking it back to the 80s this week, and I'm joined in studio here by the 1987 Buick GNX, the Grand National to end all Grand Nationals. Now, there are only 547 of these made, and we're joined by number 538 as we race through one of the most iconic decades in automotive history. Welcome to the 2018 Forza Racing Championship live from Seattle. My name is Bravo and this is Series 2, Week 2 for North America. Now last week we saw great stuff from Lightning as he ended where he started at the top of the table, but this week it's going to be Force 1 who's starting off in pole. And he knows he's going to have to hold off his opponents if he wants to maintain that position. And knowing is half the battle. Of course we've got some rad car and track combos coming up for you as we go through the decade of greed. It's the Wednesday Showdown here from North America. Hey folks, welcome to the Wednesday show down here at the Forza Racing Championship. Bravo alongside Brian Eckberg. Here we are, part two of today's show. We're talk talking about the 80s with North American drivers. Yeah, we had a great morning of racing, I guess early afternoon of racing with the EMEA. And now here we are with North America. You, you mentioned it, 80s cars, fantastic decade for racing and yep. some amazing cars to show off here yeah, today. Of course, car culture is such a big part of popular culture in the 80s and, and, and only grew over time. Well, you just saw this car, the Grand National. Amazing to have one of these with us in studio. We're going to see a pretty interesting mix of cars today. Yeah, this GNX. Now, they raced the Stradale this morning in race two. The, we're going to have a vote where people can vote on the GNX or the Stradale, the Lancia. But let's not forget, this car is a drag racing legend. It's a Buick. It's uh, murdered out. It looks amazing. But we also have two amazing race cars today right. in the IMSA Audi Quattro and of course the C9, that Group C monster that yeah. people are gonna be racing in race three. And that resulted in some awesome racing in, in race three this morning. It really did. Interesting to see exactly which track we're gonna see in race number three. We'll get to Absolutely. all that, but yeah. first up, let's get to our poll for race number two. As Brian had just started to talk about, you have here the 87 Buick Regal GNX. Once again, only 547 of these made, or the 1982 Lancia Stradale 037, of course, the code name for that project, and it's stuck. Uh, another fantastic car. We, like you said, we saw the Stradale this morning. I saw in chat earlier today, the Stradale was raced in Europe, mm -hmm. in North America. We should see the GNX. Everyone's happy. We'll have a nice balanced day of racing. Ali Tack is making faces at me. <laughs> we'll have to see exactly uh, what you guys choose. Once again, it's up to you. If we see the GNX today, we see it in the studio, but will we see it in game? It's all up to you. And speaking of, make sure you're watching it. Watch.ForzaRC.com. Lots of pretty sweet incentives here. Uh, we've got a few cars, deliveries, and also a driver outfit. Love that Polestar and, of course, the driver gear as well that people can win just for taking part and voting at watch.forzarc.com. Also some sweet liveries. You and I are looking at these earlier. That C9 livery on the Sauber Mercedes, too sweet. You're gonna see that C9 later today. Not sure if you'll see the livery. It's just, it might be too hot for TV. Yeah, that is blinding, let's call it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, also the uh, midnight driver suit there with the bandana up top and a cool other jacket. I personally could never pull off that outfit, so I might find myself using the driver suit to feel cool enough. That's right, you, the, that's what driver suit, driver gear is yeah. for. Make you feel cool when you maybe not so cool in real life. Absolutely. Also, of course, these guys have been racing all week here throughout the Forza Racing Championship Series 2 to get to this final grid. Let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights from North America. The amount of unprescribed action made this week's races something spectacular in Lobby A. It was Ethel H. Venom leading the Audi Armada into the sunsetting Turn 1 at VIR. Action was far and few between the drivers as Harmonic pressed hard to pinch fourth place of newly free agent McQueen. Meanwhile, Venom remained unchallenged and cruised comfortably to victory in the Trans Am Monster. Next up, it was time for the drivers to pay homage to their heritage in the V6 Turbo Buick at Homestead. With Diablo receiving a penalty in the first race, allowed Harmonic to challenge the F4H teammate in crime revs, squeezing him out of podium contention and bagging himself his second third place. 
As Lobby A headed towards its final race, it would be the P-Class Specialist Harmonic, perfectly poised on the outside to challenge Venom. And the overtake came within seconds of the green light, setting him up nicely to take the win in race three. Just missing out on his Wednesday showdown debut, Brizzo slipped by Julian on the penultimate lap, squeezing himself into the Wednesday races. In Lobby B, it was Lightning starting off pole position. Force One, though, had his work cut out, with VIR lacking all those crucial overtaking spots. Falling victim to the tie wall, it was Lightning suffering a huge blow to his winning chances, with Vanquish narrowly escaping a collision course with a TX3 driver, allowing Force One to soar onto victory, with Billy Sue in second. Back in the Buick and having something to prove, the action circled around Lightning, taking no prisoners, including his teammate Billy Sue. It was not enough though to stop Veloce Force One from taking the win in race two, as Lightning and Vanquish set themselves up for a good old drag race to the line. In the final race of the evening, it was Vanquish who became collateral with Billy Sue ricocheting at turn one. The drivers soon learn, however, that's never a good idea to anger a man with an aggressive driving style. Like a bull in a china shop, he stumped his authority on every opponent, recovering to take the most deserved third place so far in Series 2. Meanwhile, a hat trigger wins for the young American Force 1, means he'll be starting off pole position in the Wednesday showdown. All right, and of course, a big, big thank you to Mellish there for a recap of, of all the action that it takes to get here. You can't forget... Lots of great racing here, but these drivers, day in, day out, are making sure that they get to these races. They have a lot of work to do just to get to the Wednesday showdown, from qualifying to two days of racing over the weekend. It's a long slag, and these guys have proved their worth here for yeah, Wednesday. Absolutely. We have some interesting stories coming into this race as well. Of course, Lightning, very strong performance last week, but he's sixth here coming into this race. Yeah, and I'm not too worried about that for Lightning because we've seen him. He's, he's aggressive. He can make places up. Absolutely. I feel good for Lightning here. He obviously would love to start front, but he's going to be okay, I think. Yeah, certainly. Look for him to making, be making his way through the grid right away in race number one. Also, force one here on pole after some really strong heats from him. And this is a guy that experiences the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. He takes those losses hard. He won all three of his races over the weekend. He's in a really good spot, and he's young. I want to see him do really well here, build some more confidence up. Right. And last one, of course, to look out for is Venom coming in here, I believe, uh, here on the second on the grid. He got third last week, only one point behind Billy Sue. Another uh, sort of silent assassin I call Venom. He doesn't make a lot of waves. He's got all the pace in the world. He can make it happen here today. Right. It's time to get to uh, some racing here. Can't wait to get race number one kicked off. Let's go over to Scott Cole and Ali Tech on the desk. Appreciate it. It's time for a little North America racing. Race one of three coming your way. But first, let me introduce you to my partner in crime, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ali Tech. And we, uh, we've had time to catch our breath after the European fiasco on that final race. And uh, we're now ready to get to meet some of those North America drivers that we've been waiting for. And we got some good ones out there, to say the least. Force One, is this the time he finally flips the switch, Ali, and becomes that driver we know he can be? I hope it is. Force One is one of those drivers I've been waiting to see shine at the Forza Racing Championship. He's out there on pole position, so this is his race to lose. Now you see Lightning right there in six. Billy Sue, he's a name we got to start talking about. He's sitting there in fourth. And looking at the next six that we have, you got Vanquish, Diablo, McQueen, Please be nice to us, McQueen, when we're out there on the tracks. Absolutely. I mean, Vanquish and McQueen, of course, and two new gamer tags there, but their drivers we're familiar with. AMS Vanquish previously, AMS McQueen previously. Both of these guys a little bit unsettled, maybe, further down the grid than they would normally be uh, after AMS collapsed. It's really nice to see Dr. Bex right there. Let's get you guys to know the cars and the tracks these drivers are going to be facing. And it's no other than the 1989 Audi 90 Quattro, the IMSA GTO edition. It's slow, but it's not slow. <laughs> it's acceleration all the way with this car. 2.518 seconds. It'll get to 60 miles an hour, four-wheel drive, and a inline five engine. Incredible. And we'll be heading up to the North Carolina Virginia border at Virginia International Speedway. It's got some amazing undulation up and down the track, around the oak tree, back through the hog pen. And these guys are going to be tested really three ways from Sunday here on a Wednesday. 
What a combination. I cannot wait to see this grid of drivers go for it. And yeah, we mentioned Force One up top, Venom in second, Harmonic in third, Billy Sue in fourth, and Revs sitting there in fifth. Lightning's going to have some work to do, but we are lights out here in Virginia. VIR time full circuit as they race all the way down to turn one. First of eight laps we'll have as the sun is starting to set here on the eastern seaboard in VIR and Force One is off to a hot start. Perfect for Force One, pulling a couple of car lengths there on second and third, just in the first couple of corners. Billy Sue hanging on by his fingernails to that second place spot as Venom yeah, like Harmonic. Over Started to cut you off, is off on the right side. He actually spun all the way around and was facing the other way in traffic. That's gonna drop him well down in the grid order. We'll see where he ends up. Boy, he's gonna be in that final four. That's how far he fell back. He might be already in 12th and the ticker doesn't lie. That's where Harmonic is firmly in last place. 19th place finish at the Seattle playoffs. Harmonic is absolute beast on Fort Motorsport 7. So Sad to see him back there, but he's someone who can work his way forward through this pack. Yeah, no damage. I wonder if that was driver error. If he just was got maybe forced a little bit to the inside, caught that grass, got three wheels over, and couldn't turn it back to the right way. I saw a big smudge on that back bumper. <laughs> it didn't look like driver error to me. He looked like he had a helping hand. The lock of his Force One come down and through. It's roller coaster time. Turns 15, 16, and 17. Well, R. Kelly between Venom and Lightning. I don't see anything along with a little bump and grind. Lightning already up into third position and breathing down the neck of his teammate. Speaking of teammates, Revs and Venom there getting into each other in the battle for four. Yeah, a little love tap there. Almost sent Venom sideways, but he's able to recover as he head across the start finish line all the way down to turn one once again through the horseshoe. This is last week all over again. Remember the F4H team getting into each other at Road America last week. The three of them couldn't run side by side. Have they sorted out their teamwork issues or will they trip over each other again? Nice job by Lightning here early. Started in six, able to push his way up to third as they start to head through the snake, up through seven, eight, and nine. And that ever important South Bend turn 10. Ooh, Ooh that is a tire wall and then a push in the back. And that'll spin him all the way around. He's reversed in traffic. That car is not going anywhere. 100% engine so. damage. He'll be trying to clutch kick that car off and get some momentum going, get himself back to the pits. But these are sprint races, and that race is over. So Force One still out in front. There's Lightning. Loses a spot to Venom, who's ever so consistent. Able to capture that third spot going through the oak tree. Harmonic has recovered from last place, has moved his way back up into eighth. But Hurricane Diablo are in some serious hurting at the back of the pack. You know, when I saw Billy Sue qualify ahead of Lightning. Oh, here we know, go. I, 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 of course, I'm his biggest advocate, Billy Sue. I think he's incredible. But I didn't think maybe he had the raw pace to stay in front of him. With Lightning caught up with Venom, Billy Sue has every chance to beat his teammate in this first race. Let's bring Brian Eckberg in. Brian, what do you see through these first three laps? Uh, the, one of the first few corners, we're looking uh, from the perspective of Lightning, we're going to move to that perspective. And you're going to see him touch the car ahead of him, Harmonic touch him, Revs hit Harmonic, Diablo hit Revs, and that's when <laughs> Harmonic went off the track. And you can see he was last place for a while, I think since we've had an accident that has actually helped him a little bit, but there's uh, you know, him hitting that, that tire barrier there as well. Wow. So it was not driver error. That, that, that's the only reason I was laughing, because, boy, I was way off. Someone's off on the side, I, uh, and I think they're completely done. Is that? Yeah, that was from the previous lap. That's uh, more that's of the That's still collateral. Hurricane, right? He's still hanging out right there. Yeah, that, that's a car with a dead engine. He'll be trying, he would have tried to get it back to the pits, but I think you know, a, a mature decision, a safe decision to keep that car off on the side of the track, not get in the way of his uh, fellow competitors. So good sportsmanship there from Hurricane. Well, if mom has dinner ready, it's time to go down there and eat a few bites and get come back and get ready for race number two. He'll be back and he'll be uh, he'll be fighting later on. 
And we might have an opportunity at the reverse grid. Our final grid of the day will be a reverse grid. He's sort of setting himself up for that right now uh, with that tremendous collision with that tire wall. I mean, it was it was T-boned. He it was. It, it's not like he clipped it. He was flush with the tire wall, and that's why he suffered so much in, engine damage. Who doesn't have any issues with their engine? That's Force One. As you can see, the guys come by that final turn. There's Lightning Venom in his sights. Lightning was hot, as started at six, got as high as third, but Venom able to creep back in, secure that position. Billy Sue's in second. And, and really, I'm looking for the battles out on the track. I mean, Force One, he's just out there a Sunday drive through Virginia. You know what, Scott? That'll be fine by Force One. That'll be fine by him. Uh, this this first race, uh, maybe a car which understeers a little bit this Audi and one that doesn't necessarily suit Force One's driving style. So he'll be happy to have that clean air, happy to have the opportunity to get his full pace down because, uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be cars later that will suit him more and he might be nervous about this particular race. Drivers got to keep in their mind as they go through the, the left hook there at four and go for five and six at... They have to keep remembering there's a car off on the side. You don't want to, you shouldn't be inside at that point because uh, you know the, your, the apex is going to take you to the outside there as you come out of five. But you got to be careful that you don't get on the inside and you think it hurts to hit a tire wall. Well, hitting a, a stopped vehicle on the side is even worse. Lightning looking predatorial now on Venom. This battle is going to evolve, I think, over the course of this race. We're only halfway through it. And uh, he's got to remind himself of that. Remember, Lightning, at this track, in fact, has thrown some pretty careless moves mid-race previously. He needs to remember that it only counts to be ahead at one point in the race, and that's the very end. So lap four of eight, Scott Cole Alley Tack with you here for race number one of three today in North America here in Series 2. We got a message coming in from Hurricane himself. It said, someone hit the tire wall, and then I rammed them. So Diablo must have been the one to hit. And then Hurricane came in the back and hit um, hit Diablo, who's somehow still out there on the track. That's my read as well. Absolutely right. Uh, you know, there's two cars getting into each other. It will happen very quickly indeed. You could, I mean, you can see on the mini-map, Diablo is on the back straight. While everybody else is going through the front side, you see him going through five and six as they about to head through the snakes here. He's on the back side. And a lap about, down. It, uh, yeah. It, and, making his way through the roller coaster. So he's he's a non-factor right now. They might lap him. This, as we head up towards some of the toughest corners, it's good to be on board right now with Lightning. You can see what it's like to follow a car through this left, right, left, right, left. It is this incredible run, turn seven through 10. It's heading into turn 10 now, and it's a little bit wide there from Lightning. He's gonna lose out with a couple of car lengths, which he couldn't really afford. Closes down here at the oak tree. See if he can get a good exit there. Venom got a little squirrely. Got to worry about the rev limits there for Lightning as he's trying to get every ounce he can out of this Audi 90 Quattro. But it's all Force One right now in lap five of eight. Round the roller coaster, 15 through 17 through the hog pen. And it's pretty much flawless right now. I don't want to put a caster curse on him or anything like that, but he is just cruising around Virginia right now. It's a car that doesn't necessarily suit Force One, as I mentioned, but VIR is a place he's performed well in the past. It's uh, maybe bringing back some good memories for Force One as he leads the way here. And an excellent start by the looks of it for his Wednesday showdown chances. I mean, he's... As Brian said, he has the highest highs and the lowest lows, Force One. He's a, he drives from the heart, and it's easy for him to get maybe bogged down by his own emotion. So it's always excellent to see him keep himself in the lead, because that momentum will feed more momentum going forward. Lap seven of eight. Billy Sue is in sole second place. No one is really battling with him. There's Hurricane, chilling. He's got, a, he's got a good view of it. This is the first time we've had a fixed camera because he's <laughs> off on the side. Uh, appreciate you helping out with the broadcast and press F, you know, you gotta press F to pay respects to his engine because it's done so. 
Lap six of eight. McQueen riding along in seventh. Harmonic, after that spin, has worked his way up to seven, so he's got a nice pace. And we might have lost Force One. Force One, no. Yeah, he, he, might, he might have disconnected, which has been an issue for him. Over the last couple weeks on to the beginning of the season, he's in first. And they lost him. So Billy Sue is now first on the. Oh, he'll be spitting. That's such a yeah. shame for Force One as well. He's looked so promising, qualifies himself on the pole position. It's a, it's a force of nature out there. You know, we, we talk about breakdowns in, uh, in real world motorsport. Here on, uh, in the eSport version, you do see disconnects. You'd like to think that it'll equal itself out over the season, but yeah, as you say, Force One getting maybe more than his fair share in the 2018 Forza Racing Championship. Well, I'll throw Billy Sue out in front now, and he's got a healthy lead looking for his third win. He's put 39 races up through the Series 1 and a little bit here in the Series 2. Rick, really good last week. As they go by Hurricane one more time. Venom in second. This is the real battle right here, Allie, is between second and third. Lightning, both of these guys are tremendous pace right now. Lightning as close as he's ever been as well to the back of Venom's car. A little bit of a sweeter line there through turn 10, and he's going to have a chance into Oak Tree. Will not throw it to the inside on... Well, gives him a little love tap to the inside. Let him know he's there. Let him know he's there again. He's Can't get the momentum. Intake. Incredible overtaking drive the Lightning. I, I love to watch it. He gets close, he bumps, he'll... He'll pester you and he'll, <laughs> you know, just Venom, you know, he can look in his mirror, he can wave his hands around, what are you doing? But in the end of the day, Lightning's coming past. Take no prisoners whatsoever. Through the roller coaster they go. And you can hear him just trying to get every, squeeze every inch he can out of that 711 horsepower. As they'll cross the start finish line one more time. Final lap here at Virginia International Raceway. It's make it happen time for Lightning. One lap to get into second place and give a challenge to TX3 Billy Sue, who is starting He's to He's on the inside. Turn one. It's all about that acceleration up towards NASCAR, and he'll be on the outside. Too bad. Oh, he's going to the inside here. Does he have the momentum? Sweet little over under, but Venom's hanging it around the outside there. Hanging on by his fingertips, the F4H driver, and he's going to tap lightning. That was so close to the barrier. So close. Didn't see it in the camera view so much, but that, was, that must have been inches. And from hitting his race, he ends up forcing his way through. That's the only way to put it. Lightning now in second. He's overtaken. It's taken them the entire race to get there. Now they'll go through Oak Tree. Does Venom have revenge on his mind? I'll tell you, there is, there is not a chance that Venom will be happy about that move. There was a lot of contact, a lot of rubbing, but there was no single hard hit. It was just a lot of sliding around, grinding on each other. Final lap, Billy Sue out in front as they head through the roller coaster. Well, all that bumping and grinding was going on. A lot of the other pack has started to catch up here. Can Lightning hold out this number two spot? Get through Hogpen. They'll put the hammer down. It looks like we'll have Billy Sue provisionally out in front. Lightning in second. And Venom will finish third. That's unofficially. Vanquish made a run. Revs got in there, McQueen got in there, Harmonic was able to bounce back. Pretty wild race to start the day. I don't know whether I should laugh or cry <laughs> here. You, you, you feel so bad for Force One, but you're elated for Billy Sue because uh, he made up some spots in the beginning of this race and he nails home that win as well, provisionally of course, but Force One, boy, you have to feel terrible for him. We got three guys that should feel sick right now. Hurricane, Diablo, and of course, Force One who was well out in front, and it's, I don't want to say it's like real racing, but it's unfortunate things happen when you're out there. 
yeah, it's, it's one of those things you can't predict, of course. Um, he's going to have to, Ali, we were talking about, both of us were talking about this, his mental attitude. Put it behind you, yeah. move on. And will he be able to do that? I mean, that's not something that historically Force One's been great at. Right. You know, he gets bogged down, the emotions get to him. Um, hopefully he can come back in race two. Of course, he won't be starting from pole anymore. He'll be right. starting from the back of the grid. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe he can recover this, this race weekend. Of course, we've got the reverse grid that he might be able to take advantage of at the end of the day. Well, let's check out the replay. That's just race one of three today. And you'll see we've had several different changes, several different bumps, several different grinds. Some people got put in the spin cycle, and some people <laughs> got permanently disabled on the side, Brian. And here's Diablo running right into the wall and then being hit from behind. So we were talking about that exactly. What happened to Diablo there in Hurricane? And it looks like it was a mistake compounded by Hurricane getting into the back of him. Now, we didn't talk a lot about Billy Sue while we were out there. Right. 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 But I want to bring us back to Billy Sue a little bit because legitimately sure, now, of course. starting to look like a threat to Lightning for the top of TX3. He was, and you, you know, you can only race the, the circumstances you're given. And just as we said at the top, Billy Sue made the most of Force One, Force One's, you know, bad luck. Um, but Lightning, of course, as we see here, not about to give a give an inch here. He's going to fight for every position, taking down Venom with a plum. And I didn't see anything there that would put any penalties out there. We, but we were only looking from the side <laughs> angle, yeah. and I'm talking about Lightning and Venom. Yeah. The rest of the stuff that happened, I mean, there's going to be there's going to be some there's going to be some talk. Let's bring in Bravo now with the provisional results. Hey, thanks, guys. Yeah, some interesting results there from our race number one. Some fortunate results for some, and of course, as we said, for others, a tough race one. They're going to be looking to get some points on the board. Let's go ahead and take a look at those right now to see exactly where things ended out. In the end, it's Billy Sue there taking first place, Lightning in second, Venom and Vanquish. So. A TX3-1-2, which looks an awful lot like the finish of our round one last week. We'll have to see if they can keep that up. Like we said, tough result there for Force One and Hurricane. We'll have to see exactly how those net out. Those final results will be coming up in just a bit. But keep in mind, we're so excited to have this GNX in the studio. We saw people in the chat talking about how clean this is. This is a factory paint here with only, I think, 9,000 miles on this GNX, as clean as they come. We, had a, we talked to Allie earlier to learn a little bit more about this car. With a turbocharged V6 running at 16 pounds of boost, a low restriction exhaust with dual mufflers, a reprogrammed turbo hydromatic transmission with a rear custom torque bar to raise the chassis under acceleration, this 1987 Buick Regal GNX is one of only 547 ever produced and could be an F40 on the quarter mile. But why does it look like Darth Vader's helmet? Like so many cars from the 1980s, the GNX is built from almost childish, primitive shapes. Go to preschool, put a triangle next to a rectangle and you've basically got that formal roof line. Do it again and you've got the hood or the tail. It wasn't a manufacturing limitation in the preceding decades, car design was dominated by beautiful, complex curves and ornate, organic shapes. So what changed? One of the answers, and there are many, is that car designers moved from being sculptors, literally modeling their concepts using their hands in clay, to being programmers. They used early computers to code their cars as vector diagrams. Look at films like Tron, the visuals at a laser light show, or the graphics on an old Atari console. Back then, simple shapes were all these computers could handle. But at the time, this design process was cutting edge. A new aesthetic and a technology that every car manufacturer, from Toyota with their AE86 to Lamborghini with their Countach, wanted associated with their brand. Why does the Buick Regal GNX look like Darth Vader's helmet? Because back then, this was the future. All right, Ali, thanks for walking us through the GNX. It's too sweet. Uh, it's fantastic to have one here in the studio with us. And I know a lot of people are jealous. I know also during the break, you were hanging out that thing quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, I, I just had like a little sit down in it. Yeah. You know, I was looking around as well. It looks very clean on the outside, mm -hmm. but uh, just underneath this car, there's some exhaust pipes which have been uh, bust up in there. I think they came off the shelf at 
at GM <laughs> that didn't fit under the cars. Uh -huh. The mechanics basically crushed them <laughs> to get them in underneath. Wow. It's, a, yeah, it's an incredible machine. It really is uh, fantastic to have it with us. But let's also talk about the global leaderboards as we await our final results here. Take a look at those to see exactly where everyone has sat. Now, if we learned anything from the Series 1 playoffs, it's that we're, however we come to the global leaderboard, there's no guarantees of how we will end. Still, we have to look at this points, of course, which is a sum across all regions. Hard VR, he's back out in first. Love seeing Hard VR up there, continuing to prove uh, no longer a surprise being on the number one from Hard VR. We were talking at the beginning of the season. Wow, it's, it's, it's amazing to see TX3 Hard VR at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, we kept commenting on the playoffs, but here we, was a great playoff appearance, and he's continuing to prove to be one of the best in the world. And you know, throughout Series 1, we were saying, oh, Hard VR's up there, maybe it's a bit easier in LATAM, mm -hmm. you know, maybe he's getting an easy ride. But, you know, he came straight out of the playoffs, the, the world event at Seattle, and shut us all up. That's this right. guy has yeah. incredible pace, and is, and is absolutely legitimately one of the fastest in the world. Yeah, you could even say that, that, that bump from Lightning that he got, which really set he and Lightning back in that, in that major race, is a, is a big factor. So expect definitely big things from Hard BR. Box, no surprise to see him in number two, and Lightning after his great performance last week in, in uh, number three spot. And let's not forget, this is not counting today's results as well, so I expect there'll be a a lot of movement on the leaderboard, the global leaderboard after today's racing. One notable absence, of course, no Lege mm -hmm. on this list as he missed out on week one. Yeah, he missed out on week one, was busy for the first week of, of yeah, regional races. He's been back. He's absolutely crushed it this week out there. I mean, that final performance we saw from him in the EMEA, last place to first in the reverse grid. How amazing was that? Yeah, really fantastic stuff. Yeah, I mean, we talked about the importance of, of, of this morning's race to Lege. And he definitely proved that he's out to race. He's thinking about that global leaderboard. He's thinking about his position, where he wants to start in Mexico City, where he wants to be at London. All of these things matter each and every week. Absolutely. Some venture there in the chat between uh, Venom and Lightning there. You see a little bit of back and forth between the, for those of you who are, uh, who are keeping up with the chat. Uh, lots more driving to go. So you guys uh, make sure... Uh, if you want to make some points, prove it on the racetrack in these next coming races. But let's talk about TX3, Lightning and Billy Sue. Uh, not necessarily two people we would necessarily think of as rivals, but I tell you what, after their week one performance and then their performance here in race number one, coming in with those one, two spots, they look strong. You know, how many times does Billy Two, in a sense, have to beat Lightning in order for us to finally legitimately say, yeah, he's a rival for him? Right. right. You know, he, he, yeah, on paper, maybe he's a little bit slower on pace, but on the track, he's a maybe a smarter racer, a more consistent driver, and brings home the bacon more often. One of my favorite comments yeah. from chat was exactly, uh, someone asked who had lap number two in the pool for when will Ali mention Billy Sue? And whoever, <laughs> whoever did won a large sum of money. Yeah, I mean, Billy Sue's really taken it to uh, Lightning this series. And, you know, we felt like maybe he got a little bit lucky a, a couple of weeks ago with his win in round one. But again, you race the circumstances that you're given. Doesn't matter what happened to Force One, right? I mean, maybe Billy Sue feels bad about it, but he's got the points. And that's how it's got to be. You know, it's how it's got to be. You can see that the average race finishes, maybe not as high, the wind's not as high, but he's consistent every single race. And speaking of, here we go, Venom versus Force One. Force One, you saw him today coming out with that pole position and such a strong race. I saw actually Force One in the chat after he did DC saying he wasn't even uh, really pushing too hard. He was cruising for that win. So as we said, as you guys covered on the desk, unfortunate for him, but expect him to bounce back. And interesting to look at the penalties for both of these guys. One penalty for Force One, two penalties for Venom. That's extremely low. So it's interesting to see this banner back and forth in chat where Lightning or Venom is accusing him, uh, Lightning of, of hitting him. Uh, so, you know, twice. Venom, exactly twice. Lightning saying, no, it didn't happen. But Venom is not a guy who gets a lot of penalties, so he should know. Right, and also Venom, one of the guys we talked about, pretty underrated, right? Uh, kind of always consistent perform but maybe doesn't get as much spotlight as he deserves he does get as much spotlight i think the reason for that is that he's he's not flashy he doesn't go for glory often sure. and you know you could see it in that fight. yeah he's a quiet guy yeah. and you saw it in that fight with lightning just last race he in a sense i think he could have kept second position if he'd wanted it a bit more mm. but he let lightning through after a bit of shoving a bit of barging i can see the chat i can see him just lighting up the <laughs> chat room right now with that keyboard yeah, i didn't know. let him do anything <laughs> yeah well throw some elbows out there maybe he'll keep his position <laughs> that's know? right let's also talk about mcqueen and vanquish of course new free agents brian you talked about it earlier as well kind of these two guys looking for their teams and as that settles though 
there's still a lot of racing to do, right? They're going to end up potentially uh, uh, on the team by the end of the series, but still, as free agents, as privateers, mm -hmm. they've got to be racing in these Wednesday showdowns. They need to make an impression right away. And uh, Vanquish, I think, had some great races in the Sunday heats. Uh, he's looking to make a name for himself. But again, two guys that get a lot of penalties. So they need to clean up their act while still maintaining results. And McQueen has been running Series 1, maybe running as the wingman for Vanquish a little bit. You know, allowing Vanquish to get some great results. I wonder if being freed from the team will give McQueen the chance to shine for himself mm -hmm. rather than always be running second gun to Vanquish. It sounds like we do have final results ready. Let's go ahead and take a look at that to see exactly where everything netted out after that first race, which certainly had a few different surprises for both us and the drivers. Only one Rebs. penalty there coming in the form of revs. Wow, wow. I mean, that says it all to me as well. I mean, Lightning not getting the penalty there, Mm -hmm. I was calling that he might for that move on Venom. And so it was Venom. Venom <laughs> was so calling Venom. for that. Exactly. But I mean, that says it all. You know, Venom's going to have to punch a little bit harder. He's going to have to start getting used to maybe having bumping, a little bit of grinding as his racing style. You've got to race what the adjudicators punish and That's not right. race what you See imagine what to you be. you can it. get away with exactly. until they penalize you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So now Billy Sue Lightning going to be coming off of uh, quite a strong performance from them, of course. Uh, Due to, in part, uh, due to, in part, right, the disappointments there for Force One and Hurricane, but two drivers that we can't count out. They've got two races left, uh, and they're going to want to put points on the board. Absolutely, and, you know, Diablo, Diablo and Hurricane are probably feeling good about the fact that they scored any points there, considering Absolutely. what happened to them in the race. Force One, we talked about it on the desk. He's just got to put it behind him. Race Two is a new chance yep. to start over, and let's, uh, you know, just start afresh and Absolutely. forget race one, especially short memory. Be, especially because, right, starting on pole, it's very easy to, to start to get in the mindset that I, this could have been my race, this right. should have been my race, but uh, as veteran drivers will know, you need to get right back uh, into the driver's seat and make sure you make races two and three count. That's right, short memories count for everything. Absolutely, of course, and also we also have uh, race, uh, more race polls coming up in just a bit throughout the rest of the show. Be on the lookout for those, but now, it's time to get right into race number two. Let's go back over to Scott and Alley on the desk. Well, I appreciate it. And there's there's still some talk going on in chat between Venom and Lightning, <laughs> and, and rightfully so. Uh, nothing happened there. So, uh, you know, aggressive driving, We the, from the angle you and I had, I didn't see anything. Now, when you're behind the wheel, it, it's a little different if you're Venom. You know, he didn't bump him. He didn't spear him. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Sure. Because <laughs> Robin is racing, and Venom needs to start rubbing if he's going to keep those positions in front. It shows to me that he would want the position. You know, it, it shows, shows hunger. And I think he needs a little bit more of that. Let's open our final poll of the day. It's up to you guys to decide out there in the community. We'll be on road Atlanta in that Mercedes C9, or we'll be back at Le Mans, the circuit. Uh, Le Sarth, that's, of course, the Bugatti surfic, surfic, uh, circuit of the track. So a little bit shorter than going the full way around. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the two good tracks there to choose from. We went to, uh, went to Bugatti earlier today, so maybe a bit of variation with road Atlanta. Well, let's look at the cars and the tracks here for race number two. And I'm hoping you guys voted for the Buick. And you did. Thank you oh, so no. much. All that power, all that torque. Let's get it out there on Homestead. You oh. say all that power, all that torque, all that weight as well. <laughs> uh, this is a big old car. Say that right to my face. I can't <laughs> believe it. That was a fat joke. <laughs> <laughs> They're heading down to Homestead in Miami. I told you the tacos and the nachos are phenomenal there at the concession stand. Mostly a NASCAR track. You do see IndyCar and IMSA and the WeatherTech Series get down there. This is going to be quite a test. I love having all that power, especially when you exit out and you get on this part of the track. You can really let it go. It's going to be an absolutely awesome race. I think especially, as you say, around the ring there, it's basically <laughs> a dragster. Awesome. Well, Billy Sue will be out in front, and his TX3 brother Lightning will be in second, Venom in third, Revenge possibly on his mind. And there you see Force One, who is our pole position leader, is all the way at the bottom. And we are lights out at Homestead. Here we go. And I like that we already have some people that are willing to paint up this GNX, the rare car. And we already got some bumping through this first corner. That was McQueen looking a little bit unstable still in the mid-pack, but Billy Sue 
managing to lead from pole position. He's kept Lightning behind him. Hopefully the two TX3 drivers will be able to help each other out here at the start of the race and not spoil each other's chances by making any silly moves. Do not feed that car after midnight here on the... <laughs> 80s Wednesday showdown. I cannot wait for the 90s next week. But right now, we're just going to keep it right here with this 1987 Buick GNX, the final Grand National. We'll be doing nine laps around Homestead. And Billy Sula, <laughs> look at how much this car dips. Y'all to the inside, the outside. I mean, it's... Uh, it's a beast. It is. It's an incredible car. I mean, under acceleration, the, re the rear axle of this car is fitted with something called a, a torque bar, which under acceleration raises the rear suspension in order to stop the car from basically wheeling. <laughs> and uh, so it, it likes to go in a straight line. It likes to accelerate. It doesn't enjoy corners. And uh, so this, this section of the track's all right for it. Just wait till it gets to the windy bits. Yeah, this is going to be interesting entry back into the track. As we head into lap number two, Scott Cole and Ali Tackery, this is race two of three. And this is the most interesting corner. You see Billy Sue well wide. Way out there. Was that driver error? I think it must have been. Was, was Lightning close enough to have given him a, a little helping hand? I don't know. If it's so, that's his teammate. This is not the time to try to get that John Deere sponsorship getting out there off road into the grass. And so he's going to drop from one down to six. Don't try to take it too personal. <laughs> I know you're a fan. Hey, look, you know, I'm, I'll be the first to say, I think that was driver error. I see no bumps in the rear bumper. I see no graze marks. And coming in full throttle into the first turn like that, for the first time at racing speed, I think he misjudged his braking. We've seen it time and time again for those that don't have a lot of experience being out in front. When you take, come around for that second lap and there's no one in front of you, you don't see any brake lights, you're the only one, you got the clean air. Sometimes uh, that can be detrimental and this time it is. So Lightning is your leader, Vanquish in second now. Force One has already moved himself up into sixth place. So he's past Billy Sue. Good for you, Force One, go on. I mean, this guy, he needs so some good news right now. So unfortunate in race number one, not managing to finish the race. And so back here in race two, moving through the field, I really hope to see him giving an, a challenge for the lead, if not this race, in the third race tonight. Well, it's, and, you know, I, I say it's not turn one. I think it's turn two right here. That's the hardest one. And Lightning goes wide again. Vanquish trying to put it to the inside. Trying to force his way in there through around four and five. Lightning staying put on the right line. And that's what you got to do. You just got to believe in the line that you, you have set for you. And he's able to pull out a car length on the other side. You, you know, this is the first time we're coming to Homestead in the Forza Racing Championship. And Vanquish has proven himself previously to be someone who's always able to adapt to a new track quickly. He's always up there when it's a track that people are inexperienced at. And that's not something we can say for people like Venom, for example. Venom often requires a few kind of test runs around a circuit before he really starts to shine there. Well, they're pushing up right now. It's Vanquish all over Lightning here in lap number three. I think it's one of these things that once you hit the, the you know, the inner course here at Homestead, you just hold on. You hold on for dear life. You try to get some speed coming up back through the start finish line, and then you just wait for your chance at turn two. Can you get to the inside? It's an awesome to the inner course. We were talking about it earlier. It's a little bit like Sebring, you know, it has that kind of crunchy, very sort of, um, it's very old school feeling on the infield at Homestead. A, a great circuit to go around and a, and a really fun one to hot lap because you can find speed on the, on the curbs and on, the, and on those sort of tight little apexes. As we head into lap four, let's jump in with Brian Eckberg. What do you got for us? Just wanted to take another look at the start. Uh, you can see a little bit of action between Dr. Bex here getting wide. I don't know if he made contact with Brizzo or if he just locked his brake, but he definitely suffered there all the way to the back of the pack. And then here's that replay of Billy Sue. I think he just missed his breaking point and went wide. And Brizzo also went wide on this very same corner. So it looks like driver error there. Yeah, I, th I think you get some false confidence as you can keep your speed up through one. But then when two comes, it's a much different angle. I appreciate that, Brian. Halfway through the race here. 
Always good to take a look back, especially at that starting point, because that's everything for stacking the cars up. So currently, Lightning in first, Vanquish second, Venom running third. Headed down to turn number, it's gonna be through eight. Nine back onto the track. These guys opening up now as they head onto the outer loop here at uh, Homestead. Using all of the 300 brake horsepower, the 380 foot pounds of torque. I mean, this looks like old, I mean, it looks like NASCAR at this point. I mean, you got Buick Regals <laughs> right. coming down Homestead. Let's listen into this engine. Sound guy, crank it up. Five and nine, that is raw power coming from that V6. Of course, it's turbocharged. There's a reason it goes zero to 60 in 2.5, which even, I mean, that's just a ridiculous time. Ridiculous. Incredible, and for the time, one of the fastest cars out there. You know, Right I, now, said, it's one of the fastest cars <laughs> out there. Absolutely, I, I, and speaking of being the fastest out there, Vanquish has closed up the gap to Lightning in the lead. Vanquish. Where's all this pace coming from? It doesn't matter. He's throwing a move right now on Lightning, and Lightning trying to defend it off. But, uh, yeah, those two starting to get a little bit of rubbing going on as we go through turn six and down towards turn eight, which might be the best overtaking opportunity in this little home Well, it's circuit. 80s week. I almost feel like I'm watching a car chase. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like you know, Miami Vice kind of thing. Obviously, cars aren't as cool down here in Miami as what they had on the show. But Vanquish giving Lightning everything he can handle here in lap number five, halfway through this race. And if you're watching and wondering what it's feeling like driving this car, it's, it's a very, very weighty piece of machinery. 3,545 pounds of car right here. And that means that you have to be on the brakes earlier. You have to be slower through the apexes. You have to always be listening to the tires. What's sliding? What's, what's giving me little squealing noises right now? You know, what do I have to slow down or speed up to put the car onto its limit? It's a very, very difficult, very technical car to drive. So you always have to keep that in mind while you're watching. You know, they look slower on the circuit in a sense, but they're very, very hard to keep on the racing surface. It's got tremendous acceleration as we talked about that zero to 60 time. I'm questioning the 60 to 150 time. Uh, you know, I think it's more of a dragster than it is like a, a straight out stretch your legs kind of, uh, you know, race car. But they've made their way through six laps. Vanquish with a little love tap on Lightning. Venom is starting to get into the mix now. Yeah, Vanquish has been held up by Lightning a few too many times through those apexes, just running off his advantage with a little bump like that is allowing Venom back into this battle. That's the last thing he needs. It's one of the hardest things you can do in racing, both attack the car in front and defend from the car behind. See Lightning trying to just hold off Vanquish as much as he can. Vanquish has done some rearranging to the rear bumper of Lightning. The youngster from North Carolina Racing for not only him, but racing for his family. Let's check in with Bravo. Hey, thanks guys. I want to give a shout out to both Sterilizer and Flip Mode, our friends uh, in the chat, uh, kind of talking about this specific car track combo and uh, specifically, uh, especially about the grass right on Homestead, how it will suck you in. Flip Mode saying if you get two wheels right on that grass, Sterilizer as well. If you get two wheels on that grass, it'll really suck you in. So really interesting to see as we have such a tight pack here up front, these drivers really trying to keep control uh, of this car, especially on these tight corners. How, how important is that? It's, it's tremendously important as you even saw Vanquish right there, Alley almost get four wheels off onto the grass. That's the second time he's done that. He's been running a very tight apex on turn two. Uh, in order to extend the track through turn three. So I uh, might get a slap on the wrist if he does that too many times, Vanquish. Uh, he's looking for an advantage. Uh, so way, to, way past Lightning, he's starting to get a little bit inventive with the track limits. I'd say he's pushing them beyond that at that point. Lap seven of nine as they come down to turn eight once again, that hairpin. And this time Venom says hello to Vanquish. 
Lightning able to pull away, coming off. You know, I think it's the sheer dimensions of this car. It's, it's very long. It has a long bonnet, a long rear behind the, the rear axle as well. I think it's the sheer dimensions that are catching these guys out because they're bumping into each other. And those bumps, they don't disadvantage the car in front. They just slow down the car behind. Telling if you had one of these in 1987, you probably had some 15s in the trunk. You had your cool water cologne on. <laughs> Maybe your starter jacket. Incredible motor vehicle, so very rare. And you see Lightning lock up just a little bit. This time Vanquish doesn't test the track limits all the way. A little bit tidier, a little bit tidier. So Vanquish just making sure he doesn't get a slap on the wrist there. I think uh, all of these drivers are just trying to get this car home at this point. One and a half laps remain. And Lightning's starting to look a little bit more assured in his lead. That's right. Uh, we even in chat, Lightning's mom is in there saying hello to you, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> Say they're all watching. <laughs> hey, it's good to hear from, uh, from Team Lightning. It was such a pleasure meeting them all uh, just a few months ago before the, before the Seattle playoffs. You know, I appreciate it when you go to North Carolina. I'm down in South Carolina a couple hours away. No call. <laughs> no call, no text. I call. I write. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know how someone really the feels. Scott Cole pick up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Lap eight of nine, Lightning out in front. Rocking and rolling here in race number two. Vanquish is in second, Venom in third. Now you see Revs at fourth, but really it's been a one, two, three. Paul's starting to pull up a little bit in that fourth place. As we're riding through the final lap here at Homestead, so very casually. And a tip of the cap to Vanquish. I mean, he's raced so very hard through these nine laps, just no room to get around lighting. I completely agree. Uh, a brilliant performance from Vanquish here. Looking like leaving AMS might have been a great move for him because this pace he's showing in this race it's world class. Yeah, it's just put a, a Cougar and ME on the hood. It's just you right now until you find yourself a home. Force One pulling up alongside Revs now. There's a sniff of a podium here for Force One if he can I get think, in front I think of Venom. Him. I think Venom from F4H is helping his teammate here, holding Force One out a little bit. And now Revs is thinking about third. Let's. Let's see if they'll allow him to get back in here. I don't think Force One's going to have the pace here. Was that a little bit of team play right there, Allie? Absolutely beautiful. And that's what you can do if there's two drivers uh -oh. from the same uh -oh. team. But no good deed goes unpunished. And Revs looking for a way to <laughs> sneak that podium before the end of the race. Not going to happen. So Venom manages to take third place, Revs in fourth. Close round of the line, though, for those two. And uh, yeah, a little bit of butt clench there for Venom, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that a technical term? <laughs> yeah, you know, motorsports I've term, watched yeah. a lot of motorsports. <laughs> I, I don't remember hearing that one, Brian. Yeah, but you see all those guys working side by side. You know Veloce Force, uh, Force One was feeling so frustrated there. Yeah. But hey, great race for him. He made up five or six spots there from the back. Seems like he did just what we asked him to do. <laughs> Put it behind you. Just race your race. Um, you know he was frustrated. You know he was sniffing that, that uh, podium. But... You know, fifth place provisionally, that's not too bad. Yeah, when you start at the back, you go all the way up to fifth. In a race that there wasn't a lot of chaos or carnage in there, that was just him overtaking technically through the track. So very proud of Force One out there making his way around. And let's not forget the last race is a reverse grid. So Force One still has every opportunity to really get some good points on the board here, you know, it, with one last chance. That's he probably going to have him, what, somewhere in seventh or something yeah, like the, that? the back half, I would imagine. But, uh, you know, he's got the pace. He can make it happen. Yeah, let's take a look at the uh, replay here of race number two down at Homestead. I appreciate you picking the Buick, but uh, Dr. Beck's got caught in a little bit of chaos at the beginning. 
I'm so glad that we saw the Buick here because it's a different expression of homestead compared to that Lancia this morning. You know, raw speed on that oval, difficult to get around a corner. You saw guys missing their braking points and going wide in turns. It's just a different beast. Uh, you know, uh, completely different. The lap times are probably quite similar, mm. but finding speed in a completely different way. No mid-corner speed in the Buick <laughs> at all. Right. And it's all down the straights, it's all in acceleration. In the Lancia, it's all about that mid-corner speed. A uh, little bit of a, a tentative race for a few of the drivers. I think there's a bit of grinding there, a bit of bumping and grinding, as you say, Scott. Um, Ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. <laughs> 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 I was paying close attention to Revs there. You know, Revs isn't a guy we talk about a lot. And at, at one point, it seemed the top three were pulling away from Revs. And I was looking at their lap times. He was doing the same lap times as the top three. And then you saw that moment there at the end when I was kind of clenched. I was like, oh, come on, Revs, make it happen. Yeah, yeah. But at the, you know, they were running side by side, those F4H boys. I mean, we, we were hyping Revs so much in Series 3, right? He's been a little bit quiet this mm -hmm. year. It's good to see him coming back now, maybe showing a bit more form than, uh, than he has so far in 2018. That's right. Let's go over to Bravo, who's got our provisional results of race number two. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, let's go ahead and pull those up here. Glad that we got to see the GNX while we have it in the studio. Certainly provided for an interesting race there at Homestead. Lightning out in front and Vanquish in number two. Venom, Revs, Force One. Billy Sue drops down to six on this one, but Harmonic also mentioning there, uh, expecting a Billy Sue penalty. We saw him in chat expecting to see a penalty there for that race re-entry on the racing line. So we'll have to see exactly if he gets his way. Of course, as a reminder, these are just provisional results. So those final results will be coming in just a bit. Before we go there, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors here. Let's go ahead and hear a word from them. All right, welcome back. As we await our, our final results here, guys, talk about also some news that we've had uh, in the community. We talked about it on the earlier show, but for people who might not have heard, mm -hmm. right, AMS is no more, and we have a bunch of players looking for a new spot. You know, it's what happens when you have a, a driver of a Roadrunner's caliber drop out and join Williams. There's a vacuum. Yeah. In this case, no one filled that, that, that void. It's just the team dissolved, and so a lot of drivers are looking or potentially looking for new teams. Yeah, there's a lot of privateers out there now. We can see them on screen here. New gamer tags, got Forza Europa, Vanquish FRC, McQueen FM7. So uh, yeah, lots of, lots of tags there which uh, don't have AMS in front of them, uh, which previously did. It's a shame to see the team disappearing. Mm -hmm. A lot of sweat, a lot of tears goes into maintaining these teams, into running them. Um, at the same time, you know, the community it keeps, it, the same people stay in the community. And, and it's yeah. nice to see them coming back in new ways. They'll be, they'll be starting new teams and getting new efforts in the racing championship. And let's not forget the fallout of something like that. These guys want to prove themselves right away to make, maybe make room for their place on a new team, maybe form their own team. There's, there's lots of options in the Forza RC sure. right now. Absolutely. Another thing I want to talk about, we had a very special livery at Spa recently. That's uh, right. Brian, walk us through that. So we had uh, the Barwell Motorsport team uh, had a special livery created from a PTG Wildcat, a painter in the Forza community. They ran this car alley at the 24-hour Spa. And how did they finish? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's as amazing. always, a Forza delivery gives an extra 100 horsepower. <laughs> sure, of course. Yeah. They absolutely course. slammed it, so they won their class. It's incredible to see an absolutely beautiful livery out there. Uh, yeah, I'll be repping this in game all the time. You can just go and download it for the car, I think. You can imagine that this was an eventful race. I remember seeing sort of following it on Twitter. There was a lot happening in this race, some accidents as well. I was as soon as I saw accident, I was like, oh, no, not the bar. Not, car. Yeah. <laughs> not the livery. Don't touch the livery. Yeah, don't, don't want to see any scratches on this paint. 
Uh, but of course, also, Brian, you guys have been working on a brand new show for us, a monthly. You have another episode coming up as well. That's right. Uh, this coming Monday, August 6th at 1 p.m. Pacific, we'll have the next episode of Forza Monthly. This is our monthly show where we talk about all things Forza. We're going to have some Forza Horizon 4 news. We're going to talk about the August update for Forza Motorsport 7. Probably share some news here from the Forza RC as well. So don't miss it on Mixer and Twitch at Forza Motorsport. 1 p.m. Pacific on Monday, it's gonna be a good time. All right, fantastic, absolutely. Make sure you set your calendars, make sure you catch that episode as well, lots to come there. I think we have final results here from that race. We'll go ahead and pull that up even faster adjudication than we saw in that first race, as that first race had a little bit more wacky results, but let's mm -hmm. go ahead and take a look here at uh, our finals. No changes here, Brian, as we walk through lightning out in front, vanquish number two, Venom and Rez there taking third and fourth. Yeah, good job by the top five, I would say. You know, Billy Sue's gonna be a bit disappointed there, but Force One fought up from the back. You know, he was talking about how uh, it's so difficult to pass in this car, in the, the, the GNX, you have to set yourself up. It might take two or three laps to set to yourself even set up, up for a pass. pass, to even set it up. So the fact that he made up this many positions to end up at fifth, he's gotta be feeling good about this result. And of course, Lightning, on top, where you'd expect them to, to be. Absolutely, it's gonna make uh, this next one even more interesting as we uh, think about the reverse grid coming up in race number three. Lighting, as we know, of course, capable of really moving through the grid. Let's pull up the leaderboard, though, as that's gonna tell us a lot about what this next grid's gonna look like. After two races, folks, it's Lightning and Billy Sue, TX3, still a 1-2 up front. But Billy Sue, just like last week, his lead is quite thin. They're only in second place by one point. Yeah, and look at this, three points between second, third, and fourth. And Revs has to be feeling pretty good about having a fifth overall because he had that penalty in, right. in race number one. So, uh, yeah, it's all to play for, at least for second place here. There's a I lot was, of chances here. I was going to say the same. You can expect Lightning to really be gaining positions through this reverse grid. Anything else would be a surprise. But Billy Sue, Vanquish, and Venom, any spot that they can gain here in this reverse grid could really determine how this nets out for them. Absolutely, they've got a lot of work to do. They sure do. All right, I want to get right into race number three right away. Let's throw over back to the disc. Scott and Allie, over to you. Appreciate it, folks. So it's time for the final race of the day. And we've had some good ones thus far, including Europe, now in North America, and Force One is just on his day right now. He's just still trying to iron it out, but you got one more race, buddy. It's all about consistency over the championship. You don't win them all. You can't win them all. And so just stay in there, get the best points you can right now, and it'll pay dividends later on down the road. You know, the people who we're going to see really pushing for the win, though, are the TX3 pairing of Lightning and Billy Sue. Let's take a look at what car they'll be racing out there in our final race of the day. It is the 1989 Mercedes C9. Big old number 63. This thing can really rock and roll. Let's see what track you guys ended up picking. It is Road Atlanta. Very well done, North America. It's time to head to my home course in Road Atlanta. The undulations, the speed, not a ton of corners, but that chicane can make you pay. Absolutely brilliant. It's a very different track to the Mont Bugatti that we saw earlier on today. A lot more opportunity for the cars to settle into the race before they're forced to go into the deep braking of turns five and six. Well, here's the grid. This is the way we'll reverse it. It is Dr. Beck's up front. Rizzo is going to be second, McQueen third. But watch out with the guys in the back. Force One's going to be eight. Billy Sue is seventh. Harmonic is sixth. So the middle of the pack is tough. But then you got Revs, Venom, Vanquish, and Lightning all the way in the back. This is going to be a, something's going to have to happen for Lightning to have the opportunity to make a real run here because uh, he has got some tremendous talented drivers ahead of him. He does. Lightning is uh, one of the best uh, drivers at overtaking out there. So he's got the best, you know, this PGRG that we talk about. Sure. Uh, the po positions gained in a reverse grid. He's the best up there. But that doesn't show that Billy Sue is at the back alongside him. So Billy Sue will be in 11th. We are green on road Atlanta. We're taking 13 laps around one of my favorite circuits in all of motorsports. And Hurricane, after that engine damage earlier today, he is rocking and rolling up through the S's. You just feel like you're going so fast. Ooh. Wow. Couple cars off on the side. There's Dr. Bex. He's off as well. We'll try to sort it out. Billy Sue up alongside Lightning, trying to keep this thing straight. I, mean, I don't think they were. Action. Were they not ready? They were not ready for this track. 
That was a massive incident there over the top of the S as it looked like it all started. And that's Lightning getting into Billy Sue, backing off, letting his teammate go. Venom, Billy Sue and Lightning all racing very, very close to each other and now being joined by COD3 Brizzo. Uh, this is going to get very tasty as we head down towards the back of the first lap. It was harmonic is all the way in the back. He got caught up. Dr. Bex was in there as well. McQueen, surprise, surprise. And it's almost like we're watching this thing on four times. I mean, these guys are flying around Road Atlanta. What a race this is going to be as they head back down to turn number one. This is not the 1970 Dodge Challenger. This is the 1989 Mercedes-Benz C9. It is hauling. This is the car they put chicanes on the Molson straight <laughs> for, and you can see why. It is an absolute beast. Mid-mounted twin turbocharged V8, producing 800 brake horsepower. Hurricane holding onto that lead. This could be such a nice ending for a driver who had such bad luck at Virginia in race number one. Well, Force One is up there. You know how fast Vanquish has been today. Diablo and Revs, that's your top five. Right now, let's see if the TX3 boys can get involved. They're running just a little bit of pace behind. And wow, what a crazy first lap, Bravo. Just saw, we're already seeing their harmonic in that 12th spot there out. And he's actually in chat already calling some people out there saying uh, racing like it's a ghost race, specifically Vanquish and McQueen here. Uh, he's not too happy with the race etiquette he's seen off the break here. Well, we move to lap three. Appreciate that, Bravo. Good to have you here this week. Look forward to seeing you down the stretch for the remaining of Series 2. Lap 3 of 13. Scott Cole and Ali Tack with you. Joined by Bravo and Mechberg today. I feel like we should use our code names too. Yachts and Coltrane hanging out with you. And, you know, when you're out there in that Grand National, I know it's got 300 horsepower. It's, it's, it's a beast. <laughs> But it's almost like, you know, baseball, like swinging with that weight on your bat and then you take it off. And I think that's what's happened here. It's just they are n were not used to that tremendous speed, especially mixed with this short track. It's a very Forza RC challenge, isn't it? To take someone from a basically a road car, a drag, so which goes slowly around the corner straight into a Group C high aero we racing engine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a big old change. The driver's having to adapt to it. You're seeing Force One doing that very well, taking the lead from Hurricane, and Vanquish doing a great job in second as well. Let's check in with Brian. What do you got for me, man? I have some slow-mo of the start because these cars are so fast, it was difficult to see what was happening, <laughs> but we saw a bunch of incidents here. We saw, you can see Harmonic and McQueen getting into each other, and Beck and Vanquish is the only one who survived from this kerfuffle. I think we're going to look at this a little bit slower so you can see this in slow motion. There oh, is wow. Harmonic. I don't know if he touched or uh, McQueen got loose off the curb or something, but then you see contact between Vanquish and Bex right there, sending Bex off. Vanquish, great job to actually save it around that left-hander. Yeah, we'll see if any penalties are going to be passed out here, Brian. What's your initial thoughts on that? And we, we rewound this so many times, trying to see if there was contact. From this vantage point, from the vantage point that we saw, it didn't look like it, but it's uncertain at this point. Well, you know in Mario Kart, when they put the bananas out there and the, uh, the, the green turtle shells, I mean, <laughs> it can happen. I'm not saying it did happen, but, you know, I didn't see anything there. McQueen uh, checks in in chat saying, I was trying to avoid wrecking into a massive bottleneck happening at turn five. Sorry, Harmonic. I threw the sorry in there. <laughs> lap four of 13. As we move into lap number five, so uh, uh, we'll be doing all that talking. Force One has moved his way into first. Where have we seen that? Let's pray to the internet gods and your connection stays true for the next eight laps. Force One is going to be able to just put his own pace down this track, as will Vanquish in second. There's a big old Barney Bruin, though, for that last step on the podium. You can see up the road, it's F4H Revs in fourth, fighting with his teammate Diablo and chasing them both down. Is the TX3 livery here of Lightning. I'll tell you what, Lightning loves the Mercedes-Benz C9. <laughs> he knows all about this car, and he'll be hunting. Still got a ways to go here at Road Atlanta, which is pretty far outside of Atlanta, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's almost in South Carolina. That's how far east of Atlanta this track is in Brazelton County. It's a tremendous barbecue spot up in Long Creek. 
if you have an opportunity to head out to the racetrack. Make sure you head up there and get you a full plate if they still have any left. Lap six of 13 as we head down to turn one. Diablo with a little bit of space. And it's all force one right now. Velace looking strong, but you can see Vanquish. I, I love this replay cam. I mean, these race cars look incredibly quick with their pace, especially around Road Atlanta. You can see how the downforce affects their cornering speed. You know, how, the faster these cars go, the more air is moving over those wings, the more the car is pushed into the road surface and is able to just take the speed from that massive engine and plow it through the corners. Absolutely incredible stuff. We're on board here with Lightning, who's still chasing down that battle for third as Vanquish closes in on Force One. And yeah, through the chicane, up and over the crest. And you got to stay wide here. Wide all the way through the start-finish line. There you go. That's the way to keep it the quickest. And McQueen, oh boy. Not a sight you like to see. Little sleepy time off on the side here in lap seven for McQueen. At some point, you just riding around, you got so much damage, you just go the heck with it. I'm done. I'm done <laughs> for the day. You know, in a car like this, it all happens very quickly, and you can you can go from being absolutely zoned. You look at Vanquish squirreling around there. You see how quickly it happens. You can go from being absolutely zoned, flying around this track, you know, remembering your brake markers, click right, click left, heading all over the place, just exactly where on the track. And just in an instant, you can be parked up at the side with a broken engine, unable to go anywhere. Everyone who's played Fortson knows that feeling and knows the feeling of parking a car up on the outside. It's not a good one. Uh, there'll be better days for McQueen. Yeah, I mean, you can have, you know, no cosmetic damage, no suspension damage, but if that engine's a no-go, you don't go anywhere. What do you do? Yeah. Lightning pushing up on revs right now. Can the former privateer Paul hold off the TX3 legend of Lightning? He's giving them everything he can as they cross the start finish line of the race down to turn one and start to negotiate the S's all the way up to turn six. Nice job by revs there, getting a little bit of breathing room. Let's get back on board with Lightning if we can. I just love to watch him drive this kind of car. He is loose. He's fast. Look at him, not scared of the curbs like a lot of the drivers will be in this kind of a car. Absolutely plowing through them and that confidence paying dividends through turn five. Beautiful run. And he's just gone straight past revs. What a monster this guy is in a C9. That's what happens when you're looking in your rear view and you're not looking ahead. There's a reason why they make the windshield so much bigger than the rear view because you should be Looking to your goal, straight out in front of you. Next thing you know, here comes Lightning by in fourth. Still not in a podium position here in lap eight of 13. Our final race of the day is Diablo and Lightning and Revs go down through the chicane there in turn 10. Up and over the crest. You got to keep it so tight right there because you start to lift up a little bit and then stay wide through the start finish. Lap 9 and 13, and that is just about two-thirds of the race length here, so there's still plenty of time for Lightning to close the gap onto Diablo up the road ahead of him. We're on board now with Venom, who's trying to chase down Lightning as well. Good luck. Yeah, well, I mean, Venom is another driver who is so quick in a P-Class car. Look at that run through five from Venom. He's on fire, and look, he's so aggressive. I can't believe how quickly he's just closed up to the back of TX3's front runner. Hey, he's like, you passed my buddy Revs. That's my teammate. I'm coming for you. I think it's going to be a little bit of payback here. Venom on Lightning. These two heading down, lap 9, 13. Especially in the chicane. Watch out, because there's two breaking points here. You can either break on the front side or the back side. Of course, most of these guys choose to have to take that early breaking point and then accelerate out of the chicane. And don't forget race one tonight, VIR. Lightning passes Venom in a move that he calls dirty. Lightning not penalized for it. There is bad blood between these two drivers. If the marshals don't take care of it, sometimes you got to take it into your own hands. Or you might have to take it to the people's court. Lap 10 of 13. Venom all over Lightning right now. 
tremendous downforce going up and over these crests. Let's bring in Mechberg. What do you got for me, friend? Just very quickly, we're trying to figure out what happened to McQueen because when we looked at his car, it didn't seem like he had damage, so we were paying attention to what he was saying in chat. And he, at one point he said, screw this. And at another point later in the chat, he said, uh, I guess someone asked if he quit. He said, I was a lap down, quit. So we're not exactly sure what's going on. I don't know if he got frustrated. I don't know exactly know what's going on, but he definitely is not feeling it right now. Well, to add another piece to that puzzle, I saw a car in the pit lane. So maybe he... Maybe had damage. Had damage yep. through the Went pits. Went in. Yep. Tires and afterwards. Yeah. But again, I don't understand that attitude. Harmonic's yeah. already out. You have a point there that you can have. 100%. Yeah, I don't 100%. get it. 100%. Great stuff there from Eckberg. Sometimes the damage goes deeper than just the engine. Lap 11 of 13. Force one out in front. He deserves a podium after a DC earlier in the day. Can he chase it down? He's trying to right now. Just got to get through these final few laps here on road Atlanta. Scott Colin Alley with you. Boy, he's off on the side. That's a mistake. Force One sliding wide and Vanquish is through. Diablo's through. Didn't Force happen One again. Force One re-entry onto the track. It mm. didn't happen again. Maybe, I mean, it, 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 it was boy. driver ever. He was all alone out there, out in the lead. And he now would have to lock, he would have to have locked it up just to go straight there. That was awkward to say the least. Vanquish assumes the lead. Force One's loss is his gain. And he deserves a win here. Remember Vanquish's pace, race two, looking incredible, looking threatening on Lightning, didn't this, get through. This car from Vanquish actually has an amazing paint job that I did personally. <laughs> but all the decals are blue. Yeah. The paint is blue. It's hard to really make it out. It's only something a, a, a tremendous painter like myself would be able to appreciate. Yeah. And that's Shades why he's out in front. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And you heard of 50 Shades of Grey. This is 50 Shades of Blue coming out of Vanquish. The most important thing is in first. Diablo is in second. You got Venom and Revs. They're in fifth. Billy Sue Hurricane. Boy, what happened to Force One? It happened on that turn right there. That's turn number seven where he just decided he was going to go straight for a while. 100%. I'd love to just hop back as well to... Venom, who's still going to be chasing down Lightning. I think it was 50 feet, that gap right now. One lap remaining, and so there might be a chance here for Venom to uh Yeah, and fifth make place, ch trying to chase down number four Lightning in the position. There you can see it. Just 30-something yeah. feet separating them right now. I've been watching the different way these two drivers navigate this C9, and I think Venom's extra speed on Lightning it comes with a little awkward point in the steering of the car. It's when he rolls off the brakes, takes the speed of the car, and just pushes it into the apex. It's that moment he's a little bit more confident than Lightning with the car. This might be his chance, but it, it's, it's mid-corner speed. That's his advantage. And there's just no way through if Lightning's already taken his, taken his line. Yeah, it looks like Vanquish is going to be OK. So here's the battle right here. Four and five are going to stay right here. Provisionally, looks like Vanquish is going to hold on. And that'll cost him. That, just that little unsettling of his race car right there will give Lightning enough breathing room. He should be able to hold on to fourth as long as he can negotiate the chicane that's coming up here for Vanquish. Hard break in, full throttle out, up and over the crest he goes. Just don't hit the wall. That's all you're thinking right now. Just don't hit the wall. Get the checkered flag. And provisionally, he is there. Diablo second, Force One third. But it's another race that you felt like Force One, Brian, had the opportunity to hold on to. In one turn, it slips away. Yeah, that's the thing that can happen. We've seen it all day. We've seen it in EMEA. We see it in North America. Anything can happen in these races. Uh, you know, you got to feel good about Force One. He made up a few spots, made up two spots from the start. Uh, but you're right. Anything can happen. And it did. He'll be kicking himself. I mean, I, I, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see what happened there. I imagine that he probably got his a wheel onto the grass under braking, something like that. It would have just been something that stopped him basically from steering the car in and decelerating it. Uh, and once you're on the grass, just like in VIR, Road Atlanta will just pull your car away from the track Absolutely. surface and you're writing postcards. Yeah, you're sort of 
following along with what's happening, you don't understand it, it's Road Atlanta. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And when you look at, uh, it felt like there was no one faster than Lightning and Venom, but that was just wild. That was wild racing. It was really someone like, Vanquish that was just like, hey, I'm going to use the downforce of this car. I'm going to use its speed, but I'm going to use it under control on road Atlanta. And he looked really good negotiating the circuit. That's exactly what we were talking about earlier in the, in the news break there. When we were talking about these guys need to make a name for himself. Vanquish feels like he's been doing that all day. He's been saying, I'm a guy that I'm here. I may not be the absolute top tier, but I can win races. I got breaking news right now. The replay is ready. Race number three is in the books. Let's take a look at it again. And boy, that start was awfully fast, Brian. Well, and you see exactly, I think we were talking about what happened to McQueen and Harmonic. This is that moment where Harmonic and McQueen uh, sort of spun off. And I think McQueen took a real hard hit there, which we were talking about. That's probably piecing together this mystery of what happened. That's the moment. He went to the pits and then, you know, he s sort of gave up on the race. I guess he's going to end up provisionally in 11th, so he will get that point. But uh, bad luck there at the start. Yeah, you know, you want to finish the races, really. That's I mean, true. It never works. You know, it never works to just pull it to the side. You may be able to pick up another position. You may be able to get that one more point. And what if now he misses out on the Mexico playoffs by one point or by right. two points, right? He'll be kicking himself. He'll be kicking himself. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> well, you know, you got to say it. Or you punching. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he makes it by one point. Everything's okay. <laughs> Try to keep it, keep it positive over here. Let's go over to Bravo with the provisional results. Thanks, Scott. And as you guys are saying, uh, and I think the chat is certainly agreeing with, these provisional results will be just that, provisional, as we could see a very different table after as the final results come in. But let's take a look at where things settled before any adjudication. Vanquish out front, Diablo there in second, Force One in third, Lightning in fourth. Billy Sue's down in seventh after some early strong performances, of course, and then McQueen and Harmonic there with some unfortunate events to lead to their pull. But uh, those of you who are in chat, very much aware of you got Roadrunner, who's awake, by the way, at some ungodly hour on his side of the, uh, uh, on his part of the world. But also uh, Roadrunner, Harmonic, Europa, talking about what adjudication we might see there. Of course, uh, the judges, by the way, looking at so many different instances throughout that race. Really curious to see how things net out. And I know all of you are as well. But if you watched last week, you saw we have a new series in the Forza RC, and it's champ versus champ. It's Joseph Newgarden up against Tanner Faust. They've got a little bit of competition and rivalry of their own. You saw the first episode last week, and if you watched our show earlier, you didn't get to catch the end of this. So let's go ahead and take a look at their first challenge with one another. So for this challenge, I've chosen the 1985 Renault 5 Turbo 2. Now to be honest, I don't know a lot about this vehicle, but I know 1985 was the year Tanner turned 30, which makes him very old. 12. I was 12 in 85. Well, there you have it. It's still a classic, and we're going to race it. For this challenge, I've chosen a track that I've actually seen you drive on. I saw you uh, take the championship on this track, so I thought it'd be special for you. Maybe I was hoping it'd bring back some butterflies. Well, I have chosen a Renault 5 Turbo. Yeah, it's nicknamed the Widowmaker. I mean, these things are epic. You know, it's uh, they all-wheel drive, revolutionized rally racing, but it was very dangerous. They, they became illegal pretty soon, and you're, you'll find out why. I love the fact that you were hiding behind this vehicle as well as I was trying to I wasn't talk so to much, Smack. I wasn't hot. I wanted to see what kind of rear brake package it had on because that was the problem with these cars. I wouldn't hide behind a car that's just weird. You know, this is this is actually one of my favorite tracks. Oh, that so, sucks. How's the car? You know, it's, it's very stable, and now I'm off the road, and it's got good suspension travel, <laughs> very soft landing. And this wasn't the best lap, so I'm gonna need to concentrate on this next one. Are you saying that I should shut up? Yeah, in an Indy car, you're generally flat all the way up this hill. Short sure wheelbase in this thing, huh? The Renault 5 doesn't like that. <laughs> it's not a fan of the flat up the hill. Now it's rally style. Now we're talking. It's actually very drivable. That was awesome. Welcome to all-wheel drive. Did you ever pick up NASCAR terminology? Yeah, I've heard some really interesting... Oh, damn it. You're talking to me about NASCAR. I'm trying to do this <laughs> thing. You know, I, I always love the terminology, paint the line. 
You know, so if, if the car was working really well, you could paint the line, you could keep it down on the apron. Hmm. If it wasn't working well, it was pushing, you couldn't paint that line good enough. That looked pretty good. I, I don't know, I'm not as confident in my lap time. I feel like you, you might pull one out here in this one. It's easy to overdrive these all-wheel drive cars. I like how uh, recoverable it is. You know, you can really get out of shape and just bring it back. Look at that. You were, you were for sure oversteering and you didn't even correct. Just let it do its thing, got on power. I like the grass line. Oh yeah. All the curb. All the curb. All the curb and then some. Random downshift, that's good. <laughs> Wow, I got a lot of time to make up here. Oh, no, oh. no, car stopped. Oh, you're going, you were going for that air cushion. Oh, now I have a lot of time to make up with the slow That's straightaway. It's only a couple tenths. Don't worry about it. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, how much power does this thing have to get to the line? You got ten seconds. Come on, baby. I feel like you're not. Come a, on. It's not a bad lap. No. Oh! Just barely! No! Like a second! Literally hitting the wall on the front if, straight if away. If you didn't do that, you, you probably would have won. All right, guys, any predictions for what we're going to see between Joseph and Tanner throughout this series? I, I, I'm sure there's, uh, I think, at least three or four episodes left in that series. What do you think? Yeah, a lot of different disciplines that they'll be able to drive through. I felt like if Tanner had a shot, it was going to be in the Renault. <laughs> yeah. But you never know. We, all, we always talk about how much experience a guy like Joseph has in Forza. Tanner's newer to the game. But to be within a second of the IndyCar champ, not a bad finish. He did pretty good. He did yeah. pretty good. As you say, probably his best chance, the little four-wheel drive car. <laughs> um, I loved how zoned in he got. Yeah. Like, he was silent the second yeah. he was in that car seat, uh, just pushing like crazy. And the he, phantom downshift, too, was good. I like that. <laughs> that was great. We We've all, all been guilty pain. of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, New Garden, strong start for him. Yeah, for what sure. do you guys think is going to take the whole thing? What do you think? Uh, until I'm convinced otherwise, I'm sticking with Newgarden. Oh, yeah. the, the guy knows Forza, and uh, he's, well, they're both champs, but uh, we've seen his performance in a bounty hunter. Right. The guy is top, what, 300, 200 in the world? <laughs> yeah, right. He's got he's legit quick. speed. He's, yeah, he's genuinely very fast. I had to, I was saying, I had to go to the Newgarden's replay on that IndyCar challenge and watch how he was driving that car to learn how to beat him. Right. Like, he's genuinely really quick. Right. You're bragging that you beat him, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so tell me, who do you guys have your eyes on in North America, really this series so far. We, we just saw some really interesting races today. Mm -hmm. We saw a little bit more consistency out of, say, a guy like uh, Lightning in this series. Billy Sue stepping up in certain races. Who are your, your, your drivers to watch here in North America? From this week, Vanquish. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. the raw pace that he's had this week, beating drivers on the track who we wouldn't normally expect him to be able to beat and absolutely looking like a predator out there. Mm -hmm. So Vanquish, yeah, 100% right now for me is looking top. Mm -hmm. And isn't it interesting, I was thinking about this as we were talking about FRH working together to keep Force One behind them. Those two guys working together, TX3 Lightning and Billy Sue, I don't think they'd ever work together <laughs> in this circumstance. It, 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 it kind of feels like a theme, right? Especially with, I mean, you saw where, the way that the um, Hard BR reacted, right? When Lightning gave the bump, it feels like Lightning doesn't necessarily give a lot of regard, right? His front bumper doesn't really detect teammates. He's, <laughs> he's just making moves. Yeah, he's on a team of one, absolutely. Right. And, and that's what's made him such a powerful and, and difficult to beat in the Forza Racing Championship historically. For me, Lightning, and I was saying this last week, even though Lightning won, is that really a win for Lightning? Because he needs to learn, he needs some movement there. Right. Because every time we get to the playoffs, He's not performing. He's not winning. So mm -hmm. Billy Sue finishing ahead of him, it may be just the kind of motivation he needs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
Let's go ahead and also talk about Brian. You guys at Turn 10 have an awesome livery contest for each of the races in series number two. That's of right. Of course, this week being the 80s, some pretty fantastic 80s liveries came through. So excited about this. You know, we have this really vibrant painting community at, in Forza where people love to create liveries. Well, we have this contest that's running in tandem with our decade theme here with the Forza Racing Championship. And of course, it's 80s week here on the Wednesday Showdown. It's 80s week for this livery contest. And we have some fantastic entries. Uh, this is the theme from the Forza Racing Championship for the week that SES Screamies just embraced and put on this beautiful car. Wait till we get to the side panel. Yeah, you got to see the side panel. I mean, this so clean. I want, I want this in a t-shirt. I yep. want this in a windbreaker. <laughs> That's uh, right. This thing, a fantastic Like a, like a sleeveless t-shirt too. Oh, like wow. old school. I want this uh, screen printed on a denim sleeveless jacket. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what yeah. I want. <laughs> but gorgeous. This is, of course, the IMSA, uh, the IMSA Audi. And then here's the Porsche, the Rothmans Porsche, a classic Le Mans livery alley. Gorgeous look on this 944. It's, it's a very classic livery, isn't it? It's good to see the colors out there again. Um, I always love seeing it. There's, there's a few cars in Forza, I think, which run this livery as stock, and so uh, always good seeing it out there. <laughs> That's right, absolutely. It's well done to Red Bantha. Now, there's a story here. I'm going to read this quote because we missed it in the EMEA show, but Buddy Munter, who painted this, it tells us that Racing 80s, which is the team represented here, is a real-life performance tuning outfit based in the northwest of England. And somewhat appropriately, he has taken the, ti the team's title colors, synonymous with those 80 gra 80s graphics, and incorporated a bunch of visuals from like um, the Miami Vice film company, New Line Cinema, the MTV logo. So it's team racing 80s, both in name and theme. It's rad. <laughs> it's totally rad. It is. <laughs> This one though is so sweet. I mean, this Space Invaders theme so different from even the ones we've seen. I mean, this is uh, an arcade cabinet with a lot of horsepower. I love a bright colored livery. This is, this is probably my favorite so far. Uh, can't go wrong with Space Invaders, but that stripe, that rainbow stripe too, awesome. really looks cool too. Awesome. I, I love it as well, because if you're in that public lobby, you know that people can see where you are. That's right. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's get true. those neon colors out. Those, that neon green is so, it reminds me of middle school for sure. <laughs> this Ice Rabbit design, GNX though, uh, pretty fantastic work here with the uh, Gremlins livery. Uh, we were talking earlier about maybe just throwing this paint job on it. I'm, I'm not sure how the owner of this GNX would feel if it came back I think in this the, Gremlins. The same Gremlins rule apply to this that apply to the GNX. Don't get it wet. Don't drive it after midnight. <laughs> Be nice to it. <laughs> Don't put it in a microwave. Well, what will it turn into? <laughs> it's already a monster. That's, right. That's true. Yeah, we, we didn't even talk about it just yet. I mean, the, the fact that this car was, uh, I think, second only to the Countach yes. in 87 is wild. But PTG Fox, with our very appropriate last car we're looking at, the 80s montage visualized in this livery. This has got a little bit of everything. I mean, you can just count the references here on the side. The Ruby's Cube, Kermit the Frog, the E.T. reference. Uh, there's just so much to look at here. Yeah, it's awesome. I wonder if the grid on top now, looking at it, is from Tron, maybe. Is that maybe, a kind yeah, of light cycle right. yeah, kind of thing? Yeah. Outrun, of course, and E.T. here in the bonnet. And don't forget uh, the king, oh, MJ, Michael right Jackson, there. yeah, and Prince, of course. Prince, and yeah. Very subtle in the back, the Top Gear reference, love it. So well done, PTG Fox. These are all fantastic. And uh, if people want to submit their liveries, Brian, for future contests, where do they need to look? So go to the Forza Forums, forums.forzamotorsport.net. You'll find the, the thread there for all of our livery contests. We do them every week, but right now these themes are for the Forza RC. Right. So we've still got 90s to go. We've still got the 2000s to go. We've got two more Wednesday showdowns, two more opportunities for you to design something awesome that can appear right here on the Wednesday Showdown. Yeah, I'm excited, of course. Fantastic to have those. By the way, get into the poll because you can vote on your favorite livery of that bunch. I believe uh, earlier, I think it was Screamy's one, that first livery. Uh, we'll have to see exactly who wins. They're also gonna be available in game for a week, but I believe we have final results in oh, from boy. race number three. All right, here we go. Here we go, only one penalty wow. here, guys, and it's gonna go to Vanquish. The rest of the field, not penalized. It's, it's heartbreaking for him in a sense, isn't it? I mean, of course, if he's got the penalty, he would have deserved it. That would be for either cutting the track, extending the track, or uh, maybe getting into a little bit of bumping, which could have been avoided. So Vanquish falling down the order there. Diablo is going to take the win. So F4H Diablo, have we seen him at the top on the Forts of RC before? He's not somebody who's always there. Uh, curious to see Force 1 and 10th there. That sounds like it was a DNF. A DNF. Yeah, it sounds okay, like... Okay, for uh, Force 1? 
That's what that's what we're hearing. Apparently, uh, shut his Xbox off before the race was fully done. What? We'll have to wait and get word on yeah, it. That is incredible. That's shocking. Yeah, I think I, he was looking at you know he had made up four positions in that race, and we we're talking about what a good drive he had there. Right. So I'm yeah. shocked to see that. Yeah, we just got word in our ears that that was the case. Not sure if it, that was actually uh, it was a technical error or an error on the driver's part. We'll have to get more info there, but. Wow. Uh, Certainly an unfortunate result for him. But we have the leaderboard now, a sum, of course, of all three of those races that we saw today. Let's see how things netted out here. Lightning up front with a comfortable lead here. 50 points for him. Venom takes second, Vanquish in third. Venom in second, Vanquish in third. As you say, great result from Vanquish nonetheless then. So taking that penalty, but still managing to get on the podium this week. Uh, and what a week that he had to do it on because he had to prove himself after leaving AMS. And he's done that, I think, very nicely with that 33 points. Is this the most Venom result ever? Three podiums, three third places, <laughs> but he ends up second place overall. Right, Another right. example of this guy being the silent assassin. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Just sneaking in there, yeah. just absolutely consistent as well. I love absolutely. it. I love it. I love it. And Billy Sue's going to be happy as well, right? Although this is a fourth place finish, it's a comfortable one. He's only one point away from Vanquish. He's quite a bit out in front of Diablo. And keep in mind, he was second last week, right? So Billy Sue, quite a strong series for him as well. Yeah, he's got to feel good about that first win as well. Lots of great momentum for Billy Sue. Um, you know he wants to get ahead of his teammate in Lightning there, but I think he will be very happy with fourth place there. We also got to remember, of course, there's a lot of racing yet to come here. Let's go ahead and talk about the Rivals Booster event that is coming up. And uh, Brian, you were excited pretty earlier about the uh, the prize here. I believe we have Diablo SV for this the, event. The Diablo, man. I mean, the, one of those uh, post-Kuntash Lamborghinis that have made their way into car culture and legendary history. I love the Diablo. Yeah, I had a little 112 scale one of these sitting yeah. on the window sill when I was a kid. These are just awesome cars in the bright yellow as well. Uh, yeah, super cool. A little bit of a difficult car to handle uh, around any track, but uh, you know, an absolute classic and a, a very raw car. It's, there's not a lot of electronics to mediate mm. between you the engine and the track. And let's not forget, this is a Rivals Booster. This is a chance to earn points before we head into the next uh, round of, of, of Forza RC Series 2. And that's especially relevant for anyone tuning in thinking, oh no, I've missed out on the races, I'm behind the championship. Rivals Boosters is that perfect chance to pick up a few points, keep yourself relevant, and then move on to do the races the following week. Right, and speaking of moving on, of course, lots of racing still to come in Series number 2 as we approach the Mexico City playoffs. Take a look at this here. July 18th, our first week today. This is the conclusion of our August 1st show, but of course, two more events coming on the terms of a Wednesday showdown. That's going to be your 90s event, and of course, August 29th, 2000s, and today, Series 2 recap show, playoffs promo, and the Series 2 playoffs in Mexico City, September 29th and 30th. Guys, we are fast approaching those Mexico City playoffs moving through this season quick. Are we really halfway done with this it's series? Crazy. It blows me away. Uh, good news is, we've still got to a bunch of qualifying, we still got a bunch of weekend races, and we still got two more Wednesday showdowns. That's right, of course, and the next Wednesday showdown will be that August 15th show. Make sure you see it. Guys, for Ali Tack, Brian Eckberg, for Scott Cole, I want to thank you guys for, for having me back again. It's fantastic to see some great racing. <laughs> Love the storylines we're seeing. I think in, in, in Europe, we're seeing the, the Lege box battle is really emerging. It's going to be something that's great this season. And in North America, I think really everything is to play for. Everything's to play for. I mean, my closing thought, I think, is just Billy Sue needs to learn to win, mm. and then he can win. That's all it is. It's, it's a mental block for him. Brian, any final thoughts from you? Yeah, I, I, I still come back to that F4H moment where those Revs and, and, and Venom just acting like a team there. I love seeing that stuff. Uh, it feels like classic Forza Motorsport team play there. I love seeing that. Great stuff. All right, absolutely, guys. For Ali Tack, Brian Eckberg, and Scott Cole, my name is Bravo. We also want to thank our sponsors at Plantronics and PlaySeat for another great show here. Make sure you tune in August 15th for the next chapter in the Forza RC Series 2. We'll see you then.